procedure bylaw and item 9.3.6 governance options and if that could be in the agenda between items 5 and 6 and I'd like to add one more agenda if I could uh, item 9.4 the Aquaterra board appointments okay thanks very much council tool so uh, so the effect of all that would be to move two items 12.1 and 9.3.6 to come immediately after delegations uh, so we uh, can do that and then to add that additional item at the end of the agenda is 9.4 that's correct any discussion or debate on the agenda is recommended seeing none then I'll call for the vote thank you that motion carries. Uh, so that brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. This is an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting for anybody in the community to come forward and address council on any community related matter. Um, as long as it isn't the subject matter of a public hearing, which we're gonna get to a little bit later on in our agenda. So uh, at this time we always call and ask, is there anybody that'd like to come forward and address council on any community related matter? I see in the audience we have a number of delegations or sorry a number of uh, residents uh, from GPRC so welcome to the students who are here watching council but I did see one person signal that they wanted to come forward and uh, speak to an item so if you'd like to come forward sir come up to the presenters table uh, you can just introduce yourself and uh, uh, for the benefit of our recording secretary and uh, welcome okay. thank you Good evening my name is Delvin Kosick I'm with Internet Concepts Limited and I have for full disclosure I have a significant financial interest in a number of signs in Grand Prairie. I just want to speak to the potential amendment to the signage bylaw that's up for discussion today. Uh, if it's okay with you, I'll just read from my notes. That way I can stay on topic and get through it in a timely manner. Um, the City of Grand Prairie should take a hard look at the proposed amendments to the sign bylaw. I feel the amendments are prejudicial in the sense that they are intentionally written so that only a single organization qualifies. If the City of Grand Prairie feels that signs on public property are a benefit to the community at large, then it is only fair and reasonable to expect the City to either embark on installing and managing the signs at a municipal level or tender the opportunity for both nonprofit and private organizations to step up and meet this community need. I see this opportunity no differently than the bus bench advertising or transit advertising where the City tenders the day-to-day -day operations out and still receives an economic benefit in the end. I feel the hardworking taxpayers of our community, in this case, are getting a raw deal in the sense that the Chamber of Commerce is able to extract an economic benefit for its own cause, while the average person in our community will see little to no benefit. In addition, the City of Grand Prairie receives no compensation for this public handout, and the Chamber of Commerce will not pay any taxes on the revenue it generates. As a taxpayer, why should I subsidize a nonprofit organization that is already well funded by its own membership and for its own benefit? It's been pointed out that signs will provide for amber alerts and community notices, yet at the end of the day it's clearly been mandated by the Chamber who will own the sign that it intends to generate revenue for the benefit of the Chamber of Commerce first and foremost. There's nothing in the bylaws that establishes any guidelines for this potential benefit to the community and in all likeliness won't materialize once the cash starts flowing. In the history of Grand Prairie, how many amber alerts have we had? And in the world we live in today, social media far outpaces the speed of which this kind of communication reaches the population. By allowing this amendment to pass, the city is opening Pandora's box by endorsing a nonprofit organization to directly compete with private industry. This is not the role of government. If the Chamber of Commerce wants to embark on setting up signs for their own benefit, then they should be held to the same standards as anyone else and not be given a public handout. I don't think anyone can justify a reason why the Chamber is incapable of doing it without the city changing the rules just for them. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Kostick. Uh, any questions for the delegation? This is referencing an item that's here for third reading later on in our agenda. I recognize that you've made presentations to the committee before, and so my council may have had an opportunity to answer questions. I don't see anybody ringing in with questions, so Mr. Kostick, thanks very much. Thank you. Was there anybody else who wished to come forward to address council? Else. We do have this opportunity every two weeks at our regular city council meetings, and so we try to ensure that anybody in the community that wants to raise an issue with council has this opportunity. Um, seeing nobody else coming forward, uh, then I'll close our delegation portion of our agenda, and we'll move on uh, to those uh, items that were switched around in our agenda uh, to 12.1, uh, the procedure bylaw. And we're looking uh, for second and third reading after that notice of motion. Councillor Rice. 
I move second reading of bylaw C962S being an amendment to the procedure bylaw to allow telephone voting on specific items. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice, and uh, that motion obviously is for second reading. Councillor McLean? Thank you. Just a quick question, and I think I know the answer. This won't be for like the whole council, this could be to one item a very rare time. Councillor McLean, uh, that's correct. If you look at the bylaw, uh, it's very specific that council members would have to specifically request uh, to participate in one individual item, um, and uh, it isn't for a blanket ability to participate in the entire council. For council's information, uh, there has been a request from two council members uh, that are waiting to participate in items later on in our agenda should this motion pass. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. On the second reading. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice. Okay, so Councillor Rice moves uh, third and final reading of that procedure bylaw amendment. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. That bylaw amendment has passed, um, and as I said, there has been a request from two council members to participate in tonight's council meeting, uh, specifically for item 9.3.6. So I'll just check now to see, uh, before we move on to that item, I'll just check with our two council members. Councillor Clayton, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, Councillor Thiessen, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, okay. thanks. So the uh, that part works at least, that's good. Uh, we'll see how the rest goes. Uh, just for uh, Council's information and uh, the public's information, uh, if and when we get to voting, uh, the procedure bylaw lays out that uh, the Council members here in the Council meeting will vote first electronically, uh, and then before the votes are revealed, uh, we'll ask the Council members uh, that are participating online or by phone to vote verbally. So uh, Council members, uh, everybody's under that same understanding. Then we'll move to 9.3.6, and I'll ask uh, Mr. City Manager to introduce the uh, report. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, in Council's strategic plan 2015 to 18, Council identified as a strategic direction that we explore alternative governance models. Um, at last week's Corporate Services Committee meeting, I presented a request for direction report to the committee. Um, seeking some uh, guidance in where, which direction we want to move. The committee felt that this item was of such importance that it should be discussed by all council at an open council meeting, and hence it came forward to this meeting tonight. Hey, thanks very much, Mr. Sherbach. Um, business arising from the introduction of that report. Councillor Radburn. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. <clears throat> uh, given uh, Mr. City Manager's report, I would move the Council, in accordance with Section 102 of the Municipal Government Act, initiate amalgamation proceedings with the Village of Hythe, the Town of Beaver Lodge, the Town of Wembley, the County of Grand Prairie, and the Town of Sexsmith, and further, provide written notification of the proposed amalgamation to the Village of Hythe, the Town of Beaver Lodge, the Town of Wembley, the County of Grand Prairie, and the Town of Sexsmith, the Minister of Municipal Affairs, and the appropriate appropriate local authorities that will be affected by the proposed amalgamation. A quick uh, introduction or context for, for this motion this evening. Uh, first of all, this uh, motion uh, is consistent with the direction in Council's strategic plan adopted in early 2014 of exploring alternate governance models and options. It builds upon the work of Council over the past year, including the governance symposium held last September. It gives the opportunity to initiate a meaningful conversation among all the stakeholders on what will be the best for the future of our region. And it is the start of a process, meaningful dialogue over a number of months uh, without a determination of an outcome. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, so with that motion on the floor, we're open for discussion and debate. Uh, any discussion or debate? Councillor Tarrant. Thank you, Mayor Given. I will be supporting this motion. I think uh, you know we just recently celebrated our 100th anniversary, and uh, the, throughout the history of, of Grand Prairie and in the region, I think municipalities have changed, and I think there's been a number of uh, 
things that have, have uh, evolved over the years, and I think that our governance model should be evolving with them. And so I'm open to having this conversation with our, our regional partners and seeing, uh, you know, if this is an avenue that we would want to explore and uh, to seeing uh, their thoughts, and I look forward to lots of community uh, consultation and engagement with them. Thanks, Councillor Chair. Councillor McLean. I just wasn't sure when uh, Councillor Robert was reading there, Towns and that, did we uh, mention that we would send a letter MD Greenview at all, or was that in, the, in there as well? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Um, Councillor Clayton, would you like to add anything? I'll just, I can't see your hand from where you are, uh, so I just thought I'd give the opportunity if you had anything to add. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I will be uh, speaking in favour of this motion. As Councillor Tarrant pointed out, uh, I look forward to the discussion uh, going forward with with all the uh, noted communities. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Councillor Thiessen, anything to add? Uh, no, uh, I too will be supporting this motion as well as I think it's uh, uh, just a conversation within our community can only uh, do benefit to our entire region. So I will be supporting this measure. Thanks, Councillor uh, council members that are here in the room, uh, any other discussion or debate? Councillor McLean. I know it's not there yet, but I, I would love to see an MD Greenview in it as well in the listing or send a letter to Thanks, Councillor McLean. Uh, I'll just uh, interject to say that uh, I'll also be supporting the motion. Uh, I believe this is an extension of the good working relationship that we have with our neighboring municipalities. Uh, we have a, a good foundation of uh, relations and agreements um, that can be complex at times. Uh, I've certainly heard that expressed to me and the council's heard that expressed to us by residents. And so I think this gives us an opportunity to engage those same residents in seeking something that might work better for our region. So I certainly am supportive. Um, I don't see anybody else ringing in, so I will call for the council members here in attendance to vote uh, on their voting pads at the council table. Please vote now. For one more vote from folks in attendance. Okay, I've got them all. Okay, and uh, so I will ask first Councillor Clayton, how do you vote? I vote in favor of the motion. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Councillor Thiessen, how do you vote? I too vote in favor of the motion. Okay, thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, so I'll end the vote, and that motion would pass unanimously. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen and Councillor Clayton, for dialing in. Uh, this was the one agenda item you'd asked to participate in, and Thanks for taking time off from uh, your separate destinations in California to participate in our council meetings tonight. I didn't want to suggest that you're both there in California together, because I know you're not. Uh, thanks very much, and we'll move on with the, uh, we, can, we, can end the uh, we can end the electronic portion of the meeting, uh, and we'll move on to our public hearings with item 6.1. Um, just for those in attendance, we may hear a beep as the council members exit off of the telephone. Um, so we'll move on to 6.1. I call to order the public hearing for bylaw C 1106 4, the Northwest Area Structure Plan Amendment, and bylaw C 1028 D, the Hidden Valley Area Structure Plan Amendment. And I'd look to administration for an introduction. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are recommending that Council give second and third reading to bylaw C 1106 04, and second and third reading to bylaw C 1228 D as amended. And uh, the amendments uh, are, would be to maps 8, 9, and 11, which uh, slightly changes the green space adjacent to the creek as per the Muskegon P Park master plan. When the province chose the uh, Grand Prairie Regional College land west of 108th Street as the site for the new hospital, it identified the need for a new access onto 108th Street. That access was not included in any, tr in any transportation master plans or any area structure plans and uh, therefore um, it, it created or created some challenges to the city. Uh, on August 20, uh, 2012, Council adopted amendments to the Northwest Area Structure Plan and the Hidden Valley Area Structure Plan to remove the road network uh, uh, until such time as a new network could be, uh, could be adopted. Uh, at the November 3, 2014 Council meeting, Council approved a motion by Count, uh, Alderman McLean or Council McLean that it adopt uh, the... Uh, Northwest Road Network Study and direct administration to amend the Northwest Area Structure Plan to reflect the road network recommendations from the study. And uh, we took that uh, motion to mean uh, the uh, changing the Hidden Valley Area Structure Plan back as well. And uh, 
the the map here. This is uh, this is the road network that council adopted in uh, in 2014. Um, council is required to hold a public hearing before adopting amendments to statutory plans, and the advertising of those has been undertaken as required. Uh, as a strategic implication, adoption of a new road network for the area will enhance the efficient movement of traffic in the area, including around the hospital, which is obviously a regional importance and you know, uh, concern to everybody in the community that uh, the traffic around the hospital basically flow, uh, flow smoothly. The uh, amendment to the area structure plan uh, necessitated a little bit of change to the land uses. Not sure if you can see the cursor on this thing here, but uh, down here in this little area here where the B is, uh, the land uses generally follow the roads, and when the roads moved, uh, the the uh, land use blobs had to had to be amended uh, uh, slightly to accommodate that. Our intention was to uh, change things as little as possible, uh, with the with the expectation that the landowners in this area are going to come forward and make their own. Uh, proposed changes uh, later on. Uh, the other change is uh, in is on, actually on the college land. Again, because of the change in the road network, uh, the area uh, surrounding the hospital and the college, uh, some of those land uses had to be tweaked slightly a little bit. I did have a conversation with the, uh, with the college folks. Uh, they were uh, requesting actually that more of the land be identified for commercial expansion. But my intention again was to limit the amount of land use changes to the smallest extent possible. Uh, the other change that uh, is actually to the uh, floodplain map in the Hidden Valley Area Structure Plan. Uh, the original area structure plan was uh, uh, was based on, or the the flood map in the original area structure plan was based on a 1998 study. In 2007, uh, Northwest Hydraulics uh, prepared a study for Alberta Environment. Uh, they mapped the entire uh, Bear Creek corridor and provided floodway and flood fringe uh, mapping. And uh, what we've done here is, is we've changed the floodplain map in the Hidden Valley ASP to reflect the, uh, the floodway and the flood fringe that Alberta Environment recognizes as, as the floodplain for the, uh, uh, for the uh, Bear Creek corridor in this area of the city. Uh, the other little bit here, and again, this goes to the amendment uh, to the bylaw here, the green space, we've, we've tweaked the green space a little bit uh, to reflect uh, a negotiations that we that had happened with the developer several years ago, and also a little bit with the uh, the new lines that are in the Muska CP Park Master Plan that was recently adopted. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, the amendments are in accordance with the requirements of the Act. Uh, engineering took undertook extensive public consultation uh, in consultation with the landowners in this area when the R Northwest Road Network was developed. And uh, therefore, we're recommending that Council give these bylaws second and third reading. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, Mr. Walton. Uh, questions for administration at this time? Council Rice. If you go back a couple maps, uh, Mr. Walton, there's one there, the one that says B. It, it seems to reads to me as industrial. That doesn't seem to fit in that area. Through the mayor, the uh, the original this this rep this rep represents uh, very close to the original what the area structure plan uh, currently shows, and it does actually show some uh, light industrial back there, uh, based on uh, the location of the hospital going where it's going. Our expectation is is that's probably not a viable place for business industrial anymore, and it's our expectation that when landowners come forward. Uh, with changes to this, that there will not be business industrial in this area. But somebody could come in tomorrow and do it, and we couldn't stop them. Uh, well, um, through the mayor, the um, the next step in the process would be an outline plan amendment, and uh, there is uh, you know, and so there's a long consultation process. Uh, there would also be land use bylaw amendments. If at any stage council did not feel comfortable with business industrial air or industrial air in general, uh, they could certainly, uh, it is council's prerogative uh, to reject industrial air in the future. When would council's options expire? 
a council's options would expire if and when it uh, adopted an outline plan and a land use bylaw amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Bolton. Any other questions for administration at this time? We will have another opportunity, Council, if you have questions that arise. Uh, so I'd open the uh, public hearing uh, to presentations or submissions. So I'd ask if there's anyone in attendance that wanted to speak in favor or in support of uh, the recommended changes. Is there anyone here to speak in favor or in support of the recommended changes uh, to these uh, two area structure plans? I don't see anybody coming forward. Uh, is there anyone who is here to speak in opposition or against the two proposed changes? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition? Okay, I'll ask one last time. Is there anybody that's here uh, from the public to speak to uh, the proposed changes to the Northwest Area Structure Plan and the Hidden Valley Area Structure Plan? Again, I don't see anybody raising their hand or coming forward, so I'll just ask if Council had any further questions for administration. And if there's not, then I will close the public hearing and we'll move on to business arising. Uh, Councillor Logan. Thank you. I would like to uh, move second reading of bylaw C1106-04. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Uh, any discussion or debate on 1106-4, which is the Northwest Area Structure Plan? Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I just look forward to moving forward. I, I remember moving here in 91 when we had 27,000 and the field was empty where Westgate was. And I believe this area will fill up faster than the last uh, 20 years. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote on second reading. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Logan? You just have to turn on your microphone. Went off. Move third reading of bylaw C110604. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Any discussion or debate on third reading of that same area structure plan amendment? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well, Councillor Logan, with the second part of those two. Thank you. I'd move second reading of bylaw C1028D as amended. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. So this, of course, is the Hidden Valley Area Structure Plan amendments. Any discussion or debate on those amendments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Councillor Logan. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'd move third reading of bylaw C1028D as amended. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Any discussion and debate on third and final reading? Seeing none. For the vote. Thank you, Council. I think everybody's in. That motion carries as well. And that handles all of our public hearing business. Uh, we move on to our unfinished business and item 7.1 uh, privately owned signs on public property, bylaw C 1078C uh, amendments. Uh, this is a, looking for a third reading. Uh, I believe this relates to uh, the signs on public property. Uh, sorry private signs on public property um, as referenced in by our delegation. Do we have a motion for third reading? Councillor Ivan. Thank you, Mayor Evan. I would move um, Council give third reading to bylaw C-1078C being amendment to the use of public lands bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Ivan. <coughs> Open for discussion and debate on that motion. Councillor Logan. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, Ask council to defeat this motion. I think it was uh, uh, this uh, bylaw amendment. I think it's a, a move we're taking in error. No matter how much we say right now that there will be the one example of this happening uh, with private signs going up on public lands, once we have the first one, we will have pressure for more. And who's to say that this council next year or the next council or the council after that decide, oh, yeah, we'll make this exception and this exception. and the signs will proliferate in our public green spaces. I think this is a wrong move, and I believe the best way to stop it is to defeat the third reading of this bylaw. Thanks, Councillor Logan. Councillor Tarrant. Thank you, Mayor Kevin. I'll echo uh, Councillor Logan's concerns. I will not be uh, voting in favour of this bylaw. Uh, for me, the main opposition is the, um, the uh, article in there where it talks about uh, just allowing those organizations that are incorporated under the Board of Trades, so uh, meaning the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Um, 
I, I think that there's times when uh, city council would want to have a sign on public land for a, a greater public good, whether that be an entrance sign or a public information bulletin board. And uh, I think that we can engage people like the Chamber of Commerce, but I think there's all other partners that we'd want to, uh, to uh, bring into the mix as well. Um, I, the uh, delegation that was here earlier mentioned that you, know, that you could go to a tendering process, and there's a number of different ways that council could do it. And I, and I think by limiting uh, ourselves just to one organization within, within the city is uh, not a good practice. And uh, frankly, I, I think it's unjust and, and not fair to other organizations that should have equal opportunity uh, should council proceed with uh, with wanting one of these signs. So I, I would uh, also encourage uh, and uh, ask that council would defeat this motion. Thanks, Councillor Tarrant. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I also had uh, number one is citizens phoning me directly on this at home. And um, I'll be voting on uh, that as well. But also I brought up many times about the city of St. Albert and how they do the entrance signs. And, and I don't like how one organization. I would like to see others to be involved as well. Okay. Thanks, Councilor McLean. Uh, any other discussion or debate? Uh, Councilor Toole. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, this has been up in uh, discussion for a uh, great time. We've had some good discussion from both sides, uh, but I feel at this point in time I am going to be voting in favor. Uh, once again, if uh, the next council comes in and they want to change it, then there's that ability to, just like we are changing the bylaw today, maybe, possibly. And uh, so I'm going to say on that thing. Okay, thanks, Councillor Toole. Uh, any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. does carry four to three uh, so we'd move on to item 7.2 um, bylaw c 1226 b animals and responsible pet ownership amendment uh, this is also here for third and final reading so can we get a motion for third and final reading councillor o'toole thank you very much mayor given i move the council give third reading to bylaw c-1226 b being an amendment to the animal and responsible pet ownership bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Councillor Rice. I think we should reiterate what it, what it encompasses. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Director Galante, would you like to give a little bit of a highlight of what the amendments to the responsible pet ownership bylaw are? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As Council may recall, um, this amendment is proposing um, an exemption to the uh, current limit of animals, that is four in this particular uh, case. So there is a process outlining here uh, considering minor or major um, exemptions. So the uh, Enforcement Services Department will review the application, uh, will make an initial determination, and the exemption, if the bylaw passes, will allow the Community Safety Director to issue a permit um, instead of amending the bylaw mm -hmm. because of different number of animals that may be required um, as a minimum. So we will maintain the four animals as a minimum, but the community safety director will be uh, will have the authority to issue exemptions uh, based based on uh, minor or major um, um, requirements from uh, uh, different associations. As Council may recall, in the past, members of uh, different clubs, for example, the, the Pigeons Club, have been here, uh, as well as uh, some people requiring urban bees. So these two um, examples will, will be considered as well. And um, this is basically, in a nutshell, the uh, nature of the amendment. Thanks very much, Director Galante. Councillor Rice? So um, the director would get a chance to make an exemption uh, obviously, no one's going to breed four bees. So that would be one where you would be... Re but quite frankly, it's council that's going to get the calls from the neighbors. So is there a disconnect there? Uh, Mayor Given, okay. um, 
If the initial assessment from the Enforcement Services Department deems the application as major amendment or major uh, permit, uh, there will be consultation with the neighbors. Uh, so we're going to consult with stakeholders uh, potentially being affected because of this um, exemption. So after that, we will meet with the um, uh, applicant. Uh, we'll consider the uh, input received from the neighbors and we'll be able to take a determination. Is, is that in the bylaw as a requirement, the consultation phrase? That is correct. Okay, thank you. It's Councillor O'Toole. Yes, thanks, Ray, Mayor, Mayor Given. I'd just like to ask uh, our, uh, Mr. Galante, uh, is there going to be site visits to possible uh, Application applicants. Mr. Mayor, yes, that is correct. Uh, depending the magnitude of the uh, application, site visits, and consultation with the neighbors will be part of the process. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Tool. Councillor Terrence. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Kevin. A uh, question for Director Galanti. Uh, during the committee meeting, it was mentioned that, uh, as uh, Councillor Rice had uh, alluded to, that honeybees could be included within this exemption, being that they're, they're going to have more than four honeybees. Bees. <laughs> and so if this bylaw passes, would uh, that affect, would this take place right away, and could people apply for an exemption um, if, should they want to have honeybees for this summer? Dr. Guante? Mr. Mayor, uh, yes, that is correct, uh, Councillor Tarrant. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks for the questions. Any further discussion or debate on this bylaw amendment? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That motion carries with two opposed. Uh, and we move on to um, item 8.1, strategic priorities chart, uh, April to June 2015. Uh, the chart was provided as part of our council package. Uh, it's a regular piece of business. If somebody <coughs> would care to uh, make a motion to adopt the chart as presented, Councillor McLean. Thank you. Council approved the strategic priorities chart for the term April to June 2015. Thanks very much, Councilor McLean. Any discussion or debate on the strategic priorities chart as presented? Just an update of the work that Council is doing and our priorities for the organization. Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And we move to item 8.2. Council Rice, did you have something on? Uh, we'll move to item 8.2, Land Use Bylaw Amendment C-1260-32. Uh, I'll look to uh, administrate, sorry, I'll look for a first reading. Councillor Logan. Thank you. I would move uh, that uh, we do a bylaw C-1260-32 uh, being an amendment to the Land Use Bylaw. Get first reading. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. So I'll call for the vote on first reading. Motion carries. Uh, I want to just ask for a brief introduction from administration. Mr. Droche. Thank you, Mayor Given. So, bylaw amendment C1260 32 is an application to rezone two properties within the city from general residential to residential transition in order to accommodate multi attached dwellings. Um, administration recommends that the public hearing be held on May 4th, 2015, at 6 30 in council chambers. Thank you. Thanks very much. Look for a motion for date, time, and location, Councillor Logan. Sure, I'd move that we have Monday, May 4th uh, at 6.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers be the date, time, and location for the public hearing on this issue. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Any discussion or debate on the date, time, and location as proposed? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. <laughs> We have another land use bylaw amendment, and uh, Council, uh, with apologies to uh, administration, I'll ask for their introduction first this time before we do first reading. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. So, land use bylaw amendment C 1260 29 is an application to amend Direct Control District 9 in order to accommodate an outdoor storage yard um, as an accessory to an automotive repair shop. Thank you. Oh, sure. and we move that, the, recommend that the hearing be held on May 4th. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion for first reading? Councillor McLean. 
Secretary, do you have an order that bylaw C-1260-29 be an amendment to the land use bylaw be given first reading? Thank you. Uh, so I'll call for the vote on first reading. There's no discussion or debate on that first reading. Thank you. And date, time, and location, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move that Monday, May 4, 2015, at 6.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers be established as a date, time, location for the public hearing. Uh, thanks very much, Councillor McLean. I'm sorry, can you just confirm which day in May you said? I think I said the 4th, but am I wrong? Let's just confirm that date because in our agenda package, the way. So you could pick the 4th or you could pick the 8th, but we can't have the 48th. <laughs> we're, sure it was the so we're sure that the 4th is the Monday? Yeah. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. So uh, the 4th it is. Any discussion or debate as to date, time, and location is proposed? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well. Taking us to item 8.4, the land use bylaw amendment, C1260-34, to fix a typographical error. Uh, do you have an introduction for us as well, Mr. Trish? Thank you, Mayor Given. So yes, land use bylaw amendment, C1260-34, is to fix a typographical error. Um, so the bylaw wording uh, contained typographical error. It indicated the pro that the property was in the northeast quarter section when in reality it's in the northwest quarter section. Um, now the mapping in the bylaw was correct, so the resulting amendment to the land use bylaw map was correct. The proper property was rezoned. However, in our record, it indicates the wrong description of the property, and so this amendment is to remediate that error. Um, now, according to the Municipal Government Act, we are able to amend the bylaw um, without holding a public hearing if it is to fix an error of this nature. So these types of errors include clerical, technical, grammatical, or typographical errors that do not materially change the bylaw. Um, also, we are able to give all three readings to the amendment in one evening if second reading is unanimous among council. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that clarification of process as well. That's helpful. Um, with the motion uh, on first reading, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, McGivern. I'd move that first reading be given to bylaw C-1260-34 being an amendment to resolve a typographical error in the land use bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. I'll call for the vote on that first reading. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Radburn. Thank you. I'd move that uh, second reading be given to bylaw C-1260-34. Okay, thanks very much. Open for discussion or debate. Uh, to say that as administration pointed out, uh, we could do all, third, all three readings if this uh, reading passes unanimously. Uh, we heard that the, the uh, content of the amendment is just to fix that typographical error, and so that should be okay. I would encourage council members to vote in their support so we can get that tidied up. Uh, I'll call for the vote on second reading. Councillor Radburn? Thank you. Just a point of clarification, Mayor Given. So we don't have to have a motion to have third reading. We can just go ahead with third reading. Uh, that's what I heard from administration. I'll look to see if anybody's going to contradict that. Typically, we do have a motion to have third reading in the same night. So, Councillor Radburn, let's let's keep with that. Yeah. Good. I'd move that we uh, have uh, have third reading of bylaw C-1260-34. Okay. Thanks very much. So this is a motion that says that we can have that third reading tonight that one passes, then we'll move on to having third reading. So we have a motion to say that we're allowed to have the next motion. Uh, I'll call for the vote on having third reading. Okay. That motion carries unanimously. Councillor Radburn, we can have third reading. Thank you. I move that third reading, reading be given to bylaw C-1260-34. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Motion carries. Want to take us on into our regular committee business, Councillor Edburn, I think you're still on the mic with uh, the Community Living Committee from March 24th. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I'd move Council to receive the minutes of the Community Living Committee meeting held March 24th, 2015. Thanks very much, Councillor Edburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Does it look like it accurately captured the meeting? It must. I don't see anybody ringing in, so I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Councillor Edburn, you had some business rising, I think. I did. Uh, we did. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. 
I would move council approve the request from the county of Grand Prairie and provide in writing consent for the county to acquire an interest in land owned by the Peace Area Riding for the Disabled Society Pards. Lot 1, Plan 922-3240, located in the city of Grand Prairie. Provide a context for this motion, Mayor Given. Um, the county uh, has agreed to provide $1 million of interim financing to complete uh, their new facility, which is in the county. However, uh, the loan is to be secured with the land located that they have presently within the city of Grand Prairie. Uh, according to the Municipal Government Act, Section 72A, a municipality cannot acquire an interest in lands located within another municipal jurisdiction without written consent of that municipal council. Uh, therefore, that, uh, that recommendation, that motion uh, provides that to them. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Everton. Any discussion or debate on the motion? As I noted at the committee meeting, and this is one of those examples of where the uh, current system of local government and local governance is a bit of a challenge, uh, with one municipality having to ask for permission to have something in another municipality, both trying to serve the same organization, which benefits both uh, residents of both areas. So, um, seeing no other discussion or debate, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Thank you, Mayor Governor. Just uh, some other, uh, I guess, items on the agenda or highlights. Uh, the Grand Prairie Disc Golf Club, the Catholic Family Services, and Kool-Aid Society all provided uh, presentations through delegations and gave us updates in terms of the work of their particular organization. We received a letter um, from the county expressing an interest uh, to discuss regional public transit services. The committee directed the transit manager to contact the county to uh, begin those discussions. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, we'll move on to 9.2, the Community Safety Committee meeting. Councillor McLean, I think that one was yours. Thank you, Mayor. Give it the Council to see the minutes of Community Safety Committee meeting held March 31st, 2015. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Does it look like we got it all right? Lost. And we'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council Ward 10 or T 18 552 15 2015 Crushing Program to Bercy Enterprise Limited in the amount of $750,000 exclusive GST as the lowest bidder meeting city specs. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor McLean. Any discussion or debate on this motion? Just note uh, for the interest of our uh, public that's here, this is uh, to crush. Uh, old concrete that the city has pulled up. So whether it's uh, sidewalks or curbs, the city actually goes through on a regular basis and crushes that down uh, to smaller material that we can reuse uh, in different city projects across the, across uh, our community. Uh, any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council Ward RFP-18-552-15 to 2015 and 2016 road rehabilitation, road overlay, road resurfacing, and crack repair to Barristone Associate Engineering Limited in the amount of $879,181.57, exclusive GST as the highest evaluate of bone. Thanks very much, Council McLean. Any discussion or debate on uh, that recommendation for that RFP only? Seeing, seeing, <laughs> seeing nothing other than trying to round up or round down, I guess. Um, I will call for the vote. <laughs> that motion carries. Uh, Councilor McLean. One last one. Thank you, Mary Given. Um, I move to Council approve the purchase of a new patrol vehicle for enforcement services. Estimated cost of 40000 inclusive of GST. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Any discussion or debate on this uh, motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor McLean, anything else you want to highlight from that meeting? That pretty well covers everything. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Uh, that takes us on to 9.3. Councillor Logan, I think you've got a number of motions coming out of your committee meeting. I'll Care to start? Finally busy. Uh, move that council receive the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee meeting of March 31st, 2015. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Any discussion or debate on those minutes as presented? 
Seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Councilor Logan. Uh, first item of business is the uh, 2015 supplementary property assessment. That's bylaw C1318. I'd like to move first reading of that bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Uh, motion for first reading. I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Logan. Thank you. I would move second uh, reading of the uh, bylaw C-11318. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Any discussion or debate on second reading? And just note, Councillor Logan, that you've got the jug of water there. I think you've got five different motions that each need at least three readings, maybe four <laughs> apiece, so hopefully you're well hydrated. Uh, any discussion or debate on second reading of the 2015 Supplementary Property Assessment Bylaw? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote on second reading. Thank you. That motion carries. Mm -hmm. Councillor Rice. Obviously, there is some concern with the tabling of the provincial budget, uh, the particularly as it relates to the province no longer providing grants in lieu of taxes on seniors' uh, apartments. Uh, how is this going to affect? Uh, our budgets. Mr. Anderson? Mayor Gibbon, uh, next week we will be bringing the property tax bylaw to the Corporate Services Committee and it's incorporated in there. Okay, so it, it won't affect what we're doing tonight? No, it won't. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Anderson. Uh, Councillor Logan, would you care to make a motion to have the uh, I move that uh, we have third reading of uh, bylaw C1318. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. So as with that previous one, this is another motion to have the third and final reading here tonight. If this motion doesn't pass unanimously, uh, then this would come back at another council meeting. And we've got uh, a number of motions, a uh, number of the agenda items from here on over like that. So motion to have third and final reading. Any discussion and debate? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, so we can have third reading. Councillor Logan. Yes, I'd move uh, third reading of the bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Uh, so, motion for third reading, open for discussion and debate. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Logan. Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, move on to uh, supplementary uh, property tax bylaw C 1319 and to uh, move through uh, first reading. Okay, thanks very much. So no, no discussion debate on first reading. Uh, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Radburn, did you have something? Thank you, McGivern. Uh, just to give uh, Councilor Logan a break at some point, <laughs> maybe we could have uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, for the benefit of our students in the audience, kind of what we're doing. Okay, sure. Yeah. Be, uh, in order. So we, have, we have two that have to do with supplementary property tax, and maybe, Mr. Anderson, if you could explain the difference between the uh, first one and the second one. Sure, Mayor Given The first one was to assess property improvements that began in 2015 and complete in 2015. That was the first bylaw you just passed. The one we're doing now actually imposes the tax on that assessment. Thanks very much. Suggestion, Councillor Ivern. We do have a bunch of these, and it's hard to tell the difference because we haven't done it a million times. <laughs> Councillor Logan, uh, would you like to make a motion uh, on second reading? Uh, 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 consider supplementary property tax bylaw C1319. Okay, thanks very much. That motion for second reading. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. very much. Uh, before I hand it back, Council Logan, I'd also just note uh, for the benefit of our viewers and the people in attendance, these are things that Council has to do every year at this time before we set up the property taxes. So uh, it's sort of routine business, but it is a requirement of uh, the legislation that says how cities operate, that we have to pass these motions and pass these bylaws every year. Council Logan, do you want to make a motion? Yes, I would move that we have third reading of bylaw, property tax bylaw C1319. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Uh, any discussion or debate on having third reading? Uh, I believe we're on one nine. Mr. 
Oh, so on. Off the vote on having third. I'm looking for one more vote. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously, so we can indeed have third reading. Council, the vote. I would move uh, third reading to bylaw C1319. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Any discussion or debate on by uh, on third reading of that uh, supplementary property tax bylaw? Seeing nobody ringing in, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Logan. Yes, uh, the next item of business is a uh, business tax assessment bylaw C1315, and I would uh, uh, give thir uh, first reading to that bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Logan. We're on 9.3.3. Uh, 9.3.3, okay. Uh, thanks very much. Any dis sorry, no discussion debate on first reading. I'll call for the vote. Mr. Logan? Uh, I would move second reading of uh, bylaw C1315 as per Schedule 1. Thanks very much. Um, Mr. Anderson, can you just clarify what uh, bylaw C1315 does? Mayor Gibbon, it sets the methodology for the assessment of the property residing in the business revitalization zone downtown. So this is how to assess the items in that area? Correct. The second one establishes that we can have a tax, and the third one sets the rate. Okay. 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 Uh, so, Councillor Logan, you've moved to have second reading? Yes, I would move second reading of bylaw C-1315. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. I will... Call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Councilor Logan? I would move we have third reading of bylaw C-1315. Okay. We only have one motion to have third reading here tonight. Any discussion or debate on the merits of having third reading? Seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Logan, we can have third Thank you. I would move third reading of bylaw C-1315. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Councillor Logan, I don't know if your throat's getting dry, but mine's getting dry having to ask all these questions. Uh, Councillor McLean, third and final reading. Thank you, Mayor Gibbons. This may be out of the realm here a little bit, but I just, uh, we know this council has done a lot for planning for downtown, and um, I don't know about immediately this year, but when we start road digging up and infrastructure, maybe something might be looked at business tax assessment down the road. But anyways, it's okay. I'm just throwing that out there. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Uh, so motion for third and final reading. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. That would take us to 9.3.4, downtown BRZ business tax. I see Councillor Rice. Declare a conflict of interest for 9.3.4 and 9.3.5, as that's my employer. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So Councillor Rice will declare a conflict of interest for this item and the next one. Uh, she's employed by the Downtown BRZ Association. Uh, she'll leave Council Chambers. And uh, Councillor O'Toole. Can I just be excused for the room for just a minute or so? Sure. Uh, sure. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Logan. Uh, uh, first reading of bylaw C-1316. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Logan. So motion on bylaw C-1316. Uh, Mr. Anderson already gave us an introduction in the difference between the, those three items dealing with the downtown area. Any discussion or debate? Sorry, no discussion or debate on first reading. Excuse me. Let's call the vote. Five less. Yes. Okay. That motion carries. Councillor Logan. I would move uh, second reading of bylaw C-1316. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Motion for second reading, open for discussion and debate. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Uh, I just note that the uh, business tax uh, 
and the business tax rate uh, are related to the downtown association budget, which has been circulated to the downtown association members and reviewed at the association's annual AGM. Uh, so uh, we are essentially uh, approving the, uh, the things that the downtown association members have seen in facilitating the budget. So with that, I'll call for a vote on second reading. Six. Okay. That motion carries. Mr. Logan? Yes, I would move. We have third reading of bylaw C-1316. Okay, and again, a motion to have third and final reading here tonight. I'll call for a vote on, sorry, is there any discussion or debate on having third and final reading? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Okay, that motion carries. Councillor Logan. And finally, I would move third reading of uh, the bylaw. Thank you very much. Uh, so third reading of bylaw C-1316, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. That's me. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Very good. That motion carries. Councillor Logan, you're not off the, <laughs> off the hook yet. No, thank more. you. One, one more to go here. Uh, move first reading of uh, uh, bylaw C1317 regarding the downtown BRZ business tax rate. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Logan. A motion for reading there's no discussion and debate call for a vote thank you that motion carries councillor logan i would move second reading of bylaws uh c 1317 okay thanks very much councillor logan and uh, thank you for providing some excitement councillor tarrant <laughs> discussion and debate Thank you, Mary. I'm going to break up the uh, monotony a little bit here. Uh, I thought uh, council and maybe the public would be interested to know we, at the uh, Corporate Services Committee, we had, uh, uh, we were informed by the assessment department that there was, uh, they're being, they're lobbying for the Municipal Government Act to change so that uh, we don't have to go through this complicated process every time that there, there is this, um, they're arguing for a simpler, more streamlined approach and so that we don't have to do this every year and go through the, uh, dozens of motions that we have to do. So I was excited to hear that, and I thought perhaps others would be uh, maybe excited to hear that as well. It also provides a good intermission. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mary Gibbon, and thanks, uh, Councillor Ant, for that as well. As downtown Association does an awful lot of Santa, Santa Claus Parade, Candidate Parade, organization, and all the flowers down there. Everything you see, the Downtown Association is a part of that. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Mr. Logan, you had given us second reading. Thank you very much. I'll call for a vote on second reading. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Logan. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. So again, a motion to have third and final reading here tonight. Uh, the motion must pass unanimously. Any discussion or debate on having third and final reading? Seeing nobody, I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion does carry unanimously, Councillor Logan. And I would move third reading of bylaw C-1317. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. So uh, any call for any discussion or debate on third and final reading of that reading uh, bylaw. <laughs> uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for vote. Uh, I believe that handles all of our items that were related to the downtown BRZ. If we could let Councillor Wrights know, uh, wherever she is, that she could come back into Council Chambers. Where she appears. Uh, while we're doing that, Council Logan, I believe uh, item 9.3.6 had been <coughs> dealt with earlier in the agenda. Do you want to give us any other, was there any other business from that committee that we didn't cover with all your motions? completes all of the business. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Uh, so we'd move to item 9.4, which was our uh, agenda item that was added here tonight. That was a uh, recommendation for appointments to the Aquaterra Board of Directors. Um, could I have a motion on that, Councillor O'Toole? Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move the Council direct the Mayor vote the City's shares in support of the Aquaterra Board appointments as recorded. It's recommended. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Councillor Rice. 
Yes, the names. I think Councillor Rice, typically the appointments uh, actually don't take Aquaterra? effect. Yeah, okay. uh, the Aquaterra shareholders uh, will. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, and uh, I appreciate the motion. We've sort of established a process of council telling the mayor what to do with the shares rather than the mayor just deciding or appearing to just decide on their own. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Uh, Councillor O'Toole, I'll call for the vote. Motion carries with one opposed. Uh, we'll move on to uh, items of correspondence. Council will see in your agenda package we had a letter from uh, Special Olympics Alberta uh, Board of Directors, uh, very congratulatory towards the organizing committee of the 2015 Alberta Special Olympics uh, that were hosted here in Grand Prairie. Uh, really appreciate the board recognizing the good work of our Grand Prairie volunteers. Council Rice. I move that we receive the thank you letter from the Special Olympics Alberta Direct Board of Directors for information and in speaking to it. And of course, I think it's even more special with the appearance at our last council meeting of Katie, who came forward to tell us how well she had done in the Special Olympics. Excellent. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Is there a motion to receive that letter for information? Any discussion or debate? Again, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, we had one delegation tonight, but I believe that their business was uh, addressed with one of the items on our agenda. Uh, and we have uh, our notice of motion, which of course was moved to earlier in the agenda as well. So I think that takes us to council member round table, uh, or sorry, council member reports. And I'll start with Councillor Rice and a report from the AUMA. I was part of the Municipal Government Act Review Committee. We managed to get Bill 20 tabled in the legislature, um, which includes several items of amendments to the Municipal Government Act. Um, the items uh, are, are somewhat vague to some people, but we are now in the process of writing the regulations, which will be tabled in the fall. Uh, by the fall sitting... Um, we hope to have the majority of the 54 items. And, and of course, I guess you could say the first go-around was the low-hanging fruit. Uh, now we're getting into the, the really tough stuff. So uh, uh, an exciting process, but one that I'm confident is moving ahead quite efficiently. And I attended at the legislature. Oh, just another thing on the MJ that was tabled. Um, when the regs are written, there will be a requirement for the city to change at least one of their bylaws. There will be no BRZs anymore. They will be known as B business improvement areas. That was one of the changes. Attended at the legislature when the provincial uh, budget was tendered. It was good news as it related to MSI. Well, we really hoped that the $400 million that came earlier in the month was new money. We rather suspected that we would be reduced uh, in the MSI funding promised, but reduced, and with the $400 million added, we wouldn't fall behind. As a matter of fact, we ended up about $25 million ahead, uh, so that's not too bad of news. The bad news came in Albert Urban Municipalities Association has a special executive meeting which will be taking place this week to deal um, particularly with two emergent items that somehow were buried in the budget. I say buried in the budget, but those have to do with uh, the impacts on municipalities of the province eliminating the grants in lieu of taxes on seniors' apartments. So um, the substantial hit for well, Grand Prairie and other municipalities um, and obviously, uh, all the municipalities want more answers, like such, does it affect the 2015 before the mill rate is set? That could have a, a big effect on some budgets. The other source of concern that's emerging is the capping of the school enrollments. Uh, so that for a growing community like Grand Prairie, this could create real pressures for us. So the AUMA executive will be dealing with those uh, as well as alert um, the uh, response team, which has had a fantastic track record. Um, it, it doesn't produce warm and fuzzies. And so 
Um, I think it's it behooves the Albert Urban Municipalities Association to make sure that's something that doesn't get lost in the shuffle because it certainly is a benefit to all municipalities. So we'll be dealing with those and other emergent issues uh, as they come forward. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Rice. Thanks for your work at AUMA. It's you no know, challenge for municipalities, even uh, the size of Grand Prairie, to discern all the different impacts of the provincial budget. And I know uh, for municipalities smaller than the city of Grand Prairie, obviously, uh, is hard. So appreciate the work that AUMA does to distill that for its members. Um, move to downtown BRZ, Councilor Radburn. Thank you, Ray uh, Just a quick report. I uh, attended the uh, downtown BRZ board meeting of April 1st. Uh, topics discussed included uh, Rotary House Good Neighbor Agreement, snow removal on city owned lands downtown, sidewalk maintenance and repairs, alley and tree gate repairs, tour of Alberta route and road closure, sign by law review, uh, downtown apartment by law change, and downtown parking. And future parkade. So it was a uh, good meeting and a lot of uh, covered a lot of ground. Thank you. Thanks very much for the update, Councillor Radburn. Um, I don't think any other council members had any reports from external agencies, boards, and commissions. Oh, Councillor Rice. Uh, Councillor Radburn, subsequent, we've discovered that tomorrow night at 7 p.m., Rotary House will be signing a good neighbor agreement with, uh, I think it's 14 other. Uh, community organizations and how they want to ensure that their clients are good neighbors. So I think that's a rather exciting step forward. Sorry. No, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. And certainly I think the City of Grand Prairie is one of those signatories as well, and it is uh, exciting to see the organization take that step. Councillor Logan, would you care to start our roundtable? Yes, and I can start it really easily. I have nothing to report. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, there's a good reason to start there, I guess. Uh, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mary Gavin. Just two things to speak of. I um, was uh, just getting over, we had a pretty good flu going around the last couple of weeks, and I was one of them involved in it. Um, the one I. Did you, did you cause it? No. Okay. Children. No. Uh, so I was just going to say I was at the groundbreaking as other councillors when they did the groundbreaking, but we were at the official opening uh, where Mayor Given and Wayne Drysdale and other councillors were there as well um, of Charles Spencer High School. I was uh, very proud to be there. I know a few students there, and I remember telling them I was not inside of the new building, and they were kind of giving me heck. And so actually one of them seen me there and gave me a high five, and I was really proud of it. Uh, it's a beautiful facility. Um, it's warmer weather, and when, when the ground breaking, it was a shovel of snow. It wasn't even in the ground. It was cold. And uh, they should be very proud of it. Uh, I think their name is Maverick, and uh, changing things and reaching out there and trying to, make your community better. I think it's for the, you should be very proud for many, many years. Um, and I always wonder what was behind the big glass in front of it, and it's the library. So <laughs> you can actually there and see it. It is a beautiful building. <laughs> and I'm just going to move on, and the other thing I want to say is to uh, Councillor Rice, I just want to say how proud I am that you're the president of AUMA, and you make us proud every day. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Councillor Radburn. Just kidding. <laughs> I'd like to uh, highlight a couple of items um, uh, from my uh, round table. One is uh, I attended uh, on behalf of council, the Grand Prairie Public School District Aboriginal Youth Entrepreneurship Program Celebration. It's a program at the Composite High School that's just, uh, as it's uh, stated, it's uh, two blocks a week. They're involved in uh, developing their entrepreneurship skills and it's uh, been a great connection with uh, the students there and uh, it's uh, for first year it's done very well. And secondly, along with uh, Councillor Logan, I attended the Good Neighbor Recognition at the Grand Prairie Fire Department. There was some mention of it in the paper um, for the Kaliu family. Uh, their son and mom and dad all helped. Uh, the son noticed the and told the mom. The mom called 911. The dad went back and helped, uh, helped the son with a little bit of pre-work before the department uh, came uh, to the rescue, so to speak. And... Uh, property and other damage uh, was certainly limited as a result of their good, good work. The other uh, it, uh, part of that that just struck, uh, struck me was uh, the mother of the house that had the fire was there, and she was quite emotional and quite uh, very pleased 
I'm very thankful for the family for their uh, their great neighbor neighbor actions. So it was a good day, and I, I think it's good the Grand Prix Fire Department has from time to time does that on a regular basis, recognizes community members who have helped uh, us provide that quality service. So good on the uh, department as well. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Robert. Councillor Tarrant. Thank you, Mayor Gowan. There's just uh, one event I wanted to note this week. Uh, the Mayor and I were at the grand opening for the Curves downtown location. And uh, I just want to say it was kudos uh, to Curves for opening. It's great to see businesses uh, investing in our downtown and uh, providing a you know, they had activity there, and uh, so it was fantastic to see, and uh, kudos for the grand opening. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, just a couple things. I've been pretty busy the last couple of weeks, but uh, on the 25th, it was a Wednesday, Nighthawk uh, Ski, I'm not going to call it the ski resort, but the Nighthawk Ski Hill had a sponsor appreciation, and there was a number of activities that were out there, and... Uh, there was a spaghetti supper for those that uh, were to show up. Uh, and also, uh, last Thursday, the weekend, or just before the weekend started, I was down here opening tenders, and some of the tender uh, uh, were overlay, sidewalk program, road rehab, uh, boiler and chimneys over at the CKC, and fresh air intake over here at the MCC. And uh, I gotta let you know that there was a lot more uh, interest in the tenders this year, and uh, some of the pricing was a lot more livable with. So, thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Tool. Councillor Rice, the last one around. On one meeting with City Manager Sherbeck, and I'm sure that the fact that he didn't come to work for two days after that meant he had that flu. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I want to make everyone aware that uh, the 2015 Municipal Electronics and Paint Roundup Application Guide uh, has been sent to all municipal um, chief administrative officers, so Greg will have received that, as well as to the registered municipal collection sites. Uh, this is the 10th year of the Roundup program, and it's open to all municipalities, and it provides an opportunity to receive funding for the promotion and staging uh, of a Roundup to collect end-of-life computer equipment, televisions, and leftover paint from residents. Uh, and business and applicants will also receive incentives for the material uh, collected. So uh, Grand Prairie has had a very successful paint roundup for many years. Um, of all of the successful recycling initiatives in Alberta, the one, ironically, that's slowest to get off the ground is the electronics. It's just not seeing showing the numbers uh, that we had hoped and huge education um, initiative is being planned for this year. Uh, people are afraid of privacy of, of that. So uh, there'll be a, a huge initiative in terms of dealing with those concerns. So, uh, but there is an opportunity and I'm sure we will take advantage of, of obtaining that funding. Thanks very much, Councilor Rice. Just report on a couple of items that haven't been mentioned so far. On Monday the 30th, I was invited to attend the uh, St. Paul's United Church downtown. Uh, they have a, a number of uh, their congregation members who uh, get together on a regular basis and receive presentations from uh, different organizations and entities in the community about what's going on in Grand Prairie. I was pleased to be invited and shared with them some of Council's priorities uh, for our community uh, in our strategic plan and, uh, and our vision for the downtown. Uh, noting that uh, they're very interested in the future downtown, being that they're sort of right in the heart of it. Uh, one thing that was related to me is the challenge that they have around uh, around loud vehicles, uh, considering they're right on the corner as people head out of our downtown. Uh, they noted that uh, with loud vehicles, it is sort of like the takeoff point and uh, is a challenge for their congregation and for the community use of their facility too, so I encourage them to bring that forward to a, a future councillor committee meeting. Um, I also attended uh, at the proclamation reading uh, to proclaim Parkinson's Awareness M Month. Uh, that was at the Grand Prairie Co-op and was uh, hosted by the uh, Grand Prairie Chapter of Parkinson's Alberta. And then on uh, Thursday the 2nd, I had an opportunity to meet with two county residents uh, who are uh, 
experiencing some challenges navigating uh, the um, jurisdiction between the city and county with regard to the city's annexation area and the long-term annexation area and their desires to uh, move forward with development on their private lands. And so it was uh, a first for me to have, uh, well, Sorry, first in recent time, I should say, uh, with county residents uh, in the mayor's office, uh, seeking to speak to this, seeking to speak to the city about how they navigate that system, uh, and so I just thought I'd relate that to council. Uh, with that, uh, I hope everyone had a good Easter, and we'll call our meeting adjourned. <laughs>